coasters. How exciting is that? But seriously, coasters are a pretty fun project. Uh, not, not too complicated, very similar to a cutting board build. Uh, but what's great about coasters is you can use scrap wood. So woodworkers, we always, you know, have a bunch of scrap pieces laying around. We hoard them. We don't get rid of them. This is a great project for it. You certainly could use, you know, full stock lumber or some choice pieces that you've been hanging on to. Uh, you could even do epoxy and resin uh, for coasters. But this video, I'm going to walk you through all the steps how to, to make a coaster like so. Uh, but specifically some tips and jigs uh, to help maximize efficiency to really get some medium sized batches like this or even uh, large scale batches out. Uh, at the end, I'll talk about some finishing options. Uh, and then finally, you know, are these even worth selling? Uh, you know, what's the best use for these? Uh, they do make great gifts, but uh, stay, stay tuned till the end. We'll talk, talk a little bit more about that. But here are the steps, how to make some coasters. Check it out. Wood selection. So this is a great project to use uh, scrap wood, offcuts from cutting boards and other projects. Uh, but I do like to mix in some other woods, so I uh, can definitely get some, some full size pieces and then rip them on down. Um, so here I am with some beautiful purple heart, got some wenge, some sapili, and I'm just ripping all of these down uh, to about half an inch thick. Uh, you probably want to go 5 8 inch, you know, maybe a little bit thicker. Uh, after you surface it and plane it, it might get a little bit thin. Uh, but, you know, really, whatever uh, thickness you want, just give yourself an extra eighth of an inch or so. Um, and so, just cutting all these pieces for the thickness, uh, pre-glue up, and uh, just working my way through all the strips. And then, I like to sort them all out. So, seeing what I got, kind of get a feel for the different species, the, the varying thicknesses or the widths. So they're all at half an inch, but now I'm just deciding which pieces I want to cut thinner uh, to add contrast. And so when you're doing those thin rips, be safe. Uh, here I'm using the micro jig gripper, great tool, zero clearance inserts for safety. And uh, I like getting some really thin pieces, uh, you know, some eighth inch, some quarter inch. Uh, but you just want to take your pieces and just rip them down again, just have a variety. Um, as you're picking the, the widths, you know, take into consideration symmetry, right? So here I have a couple paired pieces, uh, so I have symmetry uh, prepped. I also have uh, different uh, widths uh, on the sides for some asymmetrical pieces, but just kind of get a feel for, hey, I have two wenge here, I have two pieces of sapili, and, um, you know, just to kind of like, okay, I'm going to do some symmetrical, uh, so I need to have a pair that's like the same width. But then also I wanna have some pieces that are, are thin and just a variety of widths uh, so I can get some um, asymmetry. So again, you just go whatever, <laughs> whatever you wanna go for. Uh, but then you do need to surface the sides of those pieces. So I talk about this a lot in my cutting board 101 video. You can tap that card or uh, check the link in the description below. Uh, it's just really important for a glue up that you surface uh, the edges. I am using a drum sander here because I have it. Most woodworkers, most don't have a drum sander. There are other ways to surface it. You just wanna make sure any saw marks, uh, anything like that isn't there. I do use a glue line rip blade, uh, but there's still you know, some imperfections. And so you just wanna make sure that the sides are surfaced well. You could use a planer, you could sand it. Again, check out the video for, for some tips on this step. And now, now comes where you just kind of want to play around with the patterns. So I like to go for about a four inch coaster, maybe up to five inches. And so you're just playing around with the patterns, uh, get the tape measure out. And so if it's going to be a four inch wide coaster, uh, you obviously would need, you know, with four coasters, that's 16 inches long. Uh, but you want to give yourself a little bit extra room. Uh, so maybe an 18 inch long uh, piece right there. And, here you can see some patterns that I have. Uh, you see some are symmetrical, some are asymmetrical, but again, you see the shorter ones, that's gonna get me four, you know, four inch coasters with a little bit of extra room. And then I have some pieces in there that are like 22, 23 inches, and I have some closer to five inch uh, square coasters. So you just decide on your width, and once you've locked in your width, you need to multiply that by four, and then just give yourself a little bit of extra. Just some extra length for your, your cuts and for the planer, all that good stuff. So for your glue up, I do like to use Type Bond 3. It's just a water resistant glue and uh, you know, coasters can take in some water. So uh, just go ahead and do your glue up. I do like to do two, uh, two of these at the same time. Uh, so here I'm using parallel clamps uh, with that messy Type Bond 3, works great. Uh, but you can certainly use pipe clamps, any option. 
Um, so you just, you know, lay down your glue like it's a cutting board. And uh, once you get them all in, make sure you don't include glue uh, on the, the, uh, the end piece between the, the two sets. Uh, you can see there I do add some blue tape on the clamps just to, to help with cleanup later. And so I don't have to scrape it off the clamps. But once you get all your pieces glued up, um, I do like to add calls. So just a piece on the top and bottom, especially with these thin ones, uh, you want to not have to plane off and do extra servicing. So that certainly does help. Uh, but here you can see here in the middle, there's the two different coaster sets. There's no glue uh, squeeze out in the middle because there's no glue there, right? So this way, it just really helps with batching. You get two at a time, get a good healthy squeeze out. Uh, don't over tighten, it's just nice and easy, just a good squeeze out. And then once they've dried, uh, I like to scrape it off with a paint scraper. So uh, this just is a lot easier. Some people like to wipe it off. It's just easier for me. You're just scraping off those uh, protruding bits, those little glue dots, uh, so that way it could run through the planer safely. Again, you could surface this without a planer. Planer's usually the best. Uh, but here, I do like to leave these extra lengths on here. So if you add the extra length on the side, and don't cut it ahead of time, that's really gonna help with snipe in your planer. And so that's just a great option. Another option is you can take a piece of scrap wood that's about the same uh, thickness of your coaster, like so, and you got the extra on the end and then the other end, and when you run that through the planer, any snipe you get where the, the blade dips into your piece, it's gonna dip into that sacrificial board, that extra piece. You could certainly attach it to your coaster blank uh, with some CA glue, or you can just run it with it. But uh, they're all messy right here, all glued up and uneven. And now you can just send them through the planer. So a uh, planer is the best tool uh, for this. Uh, you could use a drum sander to flatten. If you don't have either, uh, you could use a belt sander, a sander, uh, you could use a hand plane. I have done that before, uh, but a planer does make quick work of it. If you have questions about those two machines, tap the card, uh, talk more about the drum sander and the planer in another video. But it's a great project to do with a, a handy helper. Uh, I got my son here and we're just uh, sending them through. You can see how I'm just positioning them uh, at the same time. Uh, if you just have a continuous feed, it really eliminates snipe. And so I actually had zero snipe on this batch uh, just because I had those uh, extra long ends and I just kept running it through. And then uh, they came out nice and clean and then uh, just time to square them off. So any kind of sled, you could use your miter gauge, uh, any kind of cross-cut sled. You just wanna uh, square off the ends, get it nice and clean, and uh, then you can take a look at them and they're oh so beautiful. Uh, so you get, get a kind of feel for them. And then it time, comes time to uh, cut them to their actual uh, final size. So uh, you can do this a lot of ways. Be really safe as you do this. Uh, I like to just use the fence, kind of set the thickness. Uh, but you notice how I have my hand only on one side. Don't have both hands. Uh, that could uh, have potential kickback. Uh, just take your time. Be really safe with this. Again, you could use a cross-cut sled, uh, but you could certainly just use the fence as long as you're putting downward pressure and you're, you're going right up against that fence, but just be super careful here. Uh, again, just set, set the width uh, and then uh, do some cross cuts. And then they look oh so pretty. Uh, you could stop right here, right? You don't have to do an edge profile. Uh, they look great like this, uh, but I do like to add an edge profile. So whether it's a round over bit like so, uh, or a chamfer bit with a nice modern 45 degree angle, um, I like to use a router table. This is just a simple router table. I just mount it on plywood. Uh, I'll leave, leave a link in the description for how I do this just simple uh, DIY router table, but it really does help, especially if you're batching out a bunch. Uh, so here I am with a chamfer bit, and um, I do have a piece of scrap wood on the side, and that's just gonna help with blowout. So as I'm running it through, uh, especially the end grain, start with your end grain side first, because uh, that usually has the most tear out, and then you can hit the other sides, and you're just doing your, your chamfer all around the corners. Um, you know, do take into consideration your wood species, woods that are more prone to chip out, uh, don't have on the outside, like Purple Heart or Wenge, keep those on the inside. And uh, they look pretty, right? So nice modern look, got that 45 degree bevel, a nice chamfer, so it really does add a lot more to your coaster. Okay, so sanding, I have a bench top unit, so I'm using it. 
Um, this is great, especially for the end ring. So I'm just kind of knocking off the sides. Uh, you know, I'm going just to 150 grit here. I don't want to be too aggressive and lose that chamfer that I just got with the router. Uh, but just really quickly, just knocking off that end grain. Uh, but you're going to do a lot of hand sanding. So hand sanding is definitely still a must. And so uh, I got mine really clean off the planer uh, and with that bench top. So I actually only started at 150 here. Usually I'd start at 80 or 120, uh, but you just want to knock in all those corners, get it nice and soft and rounded over. And now comes a jig. For this jig, you just take some scrap pieces of wood, some scrap plywood. Uh, the scrap pieces, you want to make sure that they are thinner than your actual coaster. Because uh, when you sand, you want to sand the coaster, not your jig. And uh, find your coaster that's the largest. And then you just kind of knock it, knock it in with some pin nails, brad nails. You could use CA glue as well. And what you're doing is you're just making like a fence. Uh, so the coaster doesn't slide around. When you're sanding the coasters, they have a tendency to go everywhere. And when you're doing a ton of them, you really, uh, you, you wanna have that extra hand. And so uh, I'm making two different sizes here because I had a pretty big range of coasters. Uh, but you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward here. You're just giving it three, three sides to kind of stay in. And then I'm taking some shelf liner. This is just kitchen shelf liner. And then just with some spray adhesive, um, just kind of putting that into place. And so that just helps it kind of stay in place a little bit more, it grips, it grips the wood. Shelf liner is just a great, a great little hack to use uh, when sanding things. But go and test the size, it works great, and then sand. So for sanding, this really just speeds up the time, it just improves efficiency. So you can clamp the whole thing down just with a clamp to a bench or a table, or you can use a, a bench dog like I have here and my vise. Um, but you might need a piece of scrap wood at the end if it's jostling out, but usually it isn't too bad. And then you can just focus your hands on the sander and not having to hold the piece down. And then you just work your way up through the grits. Um, you know, usually I do 120, 150, and then 220, and it just makes quick work of a lot of coasters. So wood finish. Uh, a lot of opinions about what wood finish uh, you need for coasters. Some are adamant that it needs to be something that's like an oil, like a Danish oil or, or walnut oil or mineral oil where the coaster can absorb that excess moisture. Uh, others would say, no, you have to use a film finish like a polyurethane uh, to make sure no moisture gets in. I've done both and they're both fantastic. And so really it's whatever finish you want. Uh, I, I've done a ton with uh, General Finish's Armor Seal. It's like a polyurethane, fantastic. It's my favorite film finish. It's just crazy time consuming. And all of these coasters, you know, you're gonna have to do two or three coats, sanding in between uh, oily woods uh, like Paduke uh, that have a higher oil content. Sometimes they take longer to cure. Uh, so it's definitely a great finish. It's just time consuming. You know, you could do a spray lacquer and just build up your coats like that. A uh, shellac would probably go a lot faster. Um, I have also just done mineral oil. Uh, it's actually uh, the ones that we use here at our house all the time are just oil and you know, they fade over time and they just need, you know, maintenance like a cutting board, uh, but they work great. Uh, so just, you know, some, some mineral oil and some wood wax like a cutting board, or you could do boiled linseed oil or, or whatever, whatever you really want to do. Uh, for, for these coasters, I want to try something that's kind of in between. Um, I've been using Osmo a lot for, for a lot of different projects. It's a hard wax. So it's a different product. It's a little bit more protection than just oil and wax, and but it's a little bit less than a, a true film finish, but it'll save a lot of time with applications. So I'm going to walk you through the steps of how I do this. Uh, find this finish. If you're not interested in this, you can skip ahead, but you want to see that satisfying color reveal. Uh, one other note I will say, um, if you're going to do a film finish, they get a little slippery. And so you can just get these little cabinet bumpers and you just throw these cabinet bumpers on the bottom. Uh, it just keeps them from skidding around. It's just an option uh, that you can do. But anyway, let's finish some coasters, see that natural color. Right, so like with any finish, go ahead and mix it on up. Uh, with Osmo, I like to use these light scouring pads. And so it uh, just does a, a little bit of abrasive work just to kind of, you know, refine it, maybe a little bit bonus sanding, but it really helps to get the finish deep into the pores. And so you just want to apply it on both sides, get it in everywhere. Uh, but what's really key with this finish is after, after it's in, maybe let it sit for a little while, you got to take off all the excess finish. So uh, 
using maybe another scouring pad or a shop towel, you gotta get that, that excess finish off uh, and you wanna buff it in. If you leave any excess on, it's just gonna uh, leave a, a not so great finish. And so here I'm just using a random orbital buffer in my vise. Uh, makes quick work of it, really buffs it in. It's just such a great little tool. Uh, great for this finish especially, but just gotta make sure you buff it in. And just after one coat, they look fantastic. Uh, so here you can see just all of those natural colors just coming to life. Um, with this finish, again, you probably want to do two coats. Uh, but whatever finish you want, uh, go for. But you can really see all the possibilities with the different colors and species uh, for coasters. And here they are, the finished product in all its natural beauty. Uh, so they are a lot of fun, uh, especially when you can use some great colors, some, some great pop of colors and wood grain. Pretty fun project, coasters. All right, to sell or not to sell. Uh, do whatever you want. Um, this is just my experience. So, I mean, you got a set of coasters and normally you're gonna go with about a set of four. And how much is someone gonna actually pay for a set of coasters, right? Some people charge just 20, 30 bucks. That's crazy to me. Um, you know, maybe, you know, 40, $50. You're kind of pushing it there. Uh, not many people are gonna spend that much for a set of coasters. However, a small cutting board, like, you know, basically like this, but just elongated, people will spend 60, 80 bucks. Um, but with four coasters, you're, you're doing that much more work, more edge profiles, more sanding. So there's a lot more work involved in a coaster than say a small cutting board. Uh, however, coasters could be, you know, a gateway purchase. Um, you know, for me personally, okay, full disclosure, I've never sold coasters. And it's for that very reason. It just felt like way too much work uh, and it didn't yield as much profit. Uh, however, I've made a ton of these. These have been great gifts. Uh, they kind of get the word out. People can see your use of all the different exotics, especially if you're just starting out with woodworking and you can't swing like a bunch of wenge or some babinga and purple heart and those really expensive exotic woods. You just need a little for a pop here. And this really can kind of get the word out and you can kind of see your work. And if someone digs your coasters and they see that, maybe they want to jump in on, on a more fancy cutting board, a bigger purchase. And so, um, you know, it just, again, all, all of the variables with selling, everyone has their philosophy. For me personally, I just see too many woodworkers, you know, underselling themselves and like the wood is not cheap and the labor is, is pretty, you know, there's a lot of labor involved. So uh, you can certainly sell them. Uh, but for me personally, I haven't sold them. Uh, but if you're just getting started out and you want to get the word out, this is a, a great starter project. Uh, maybe you get people to start, you know, buying some coasters and then you can scale up to cutting boards and then you can work your way up. Again, it's all about your motivation and what you're in, in it for. But I do love making these as gifts. Uh, it's fun to change it up between, uh, you know, coasters, cutting boards, serving boards and all that so uh, for me personally I, I invest more time in, in a bigger board uh, something bigger you know I've sold over you know a hundred cutting boards and serving boards that's just where I go um, with with my philosophy of sales uh, but you know take that for what it's worth um, they're still fun I still enjoy making them uh, again you know like I said with the finishing earlier once I made a batch of 15 with the film finish that was ridiculous I uh, wasn't as much fun uh, you know find a finish find a system where where it's still fun and enjoyable like with anything in woodworking so anyway there you go um, if you enjoyed this video at all you want to see more stuff like this please consider subscribing. Uh, we'll have lots of hardwoods, you know, a variety, uh, just a variety of projects. Um, lots, of, lots of information down in the description, links to some of the other videos, and so just some more information about all that good stuff. So thank you everyone for watching. Um, take care, make some coasters, they're fun. Sell them, gift them, do whatever you want, but uh, you know, make some sawdust, get some sawdust shenanigans going. All right, take care everyone.